Listening to music is as much an emotional experience as it is a scientific one. And I want you to keep this in mind as we dive into Name's new classic series of components. Yeah. Name's new classic range of products is broken down into two series, the 300 and the 200. The new 200 series reviewed here consists of three products, the NSC-222 preamp DAC streamer, the NAP-250 stereo power amplifier, and lastly, the MPX-300 power supply. For those of you interested in the 300 series, go ahead and check out the description below. The NSC-222 is NAME's take on a modern stereo preamp. Very reminiscent of NAME's existing Unity line, the 222 has NAME's streaming platform built in, giving listeners access to popular services like Spotify, Title and Cobas while allowing them to see the metadata and cover art on the NSC's large color screen. In addition to support for numerous streaming services, it has a library of pre-programmed internet radio stations, is Rune ready, and supports AirPlay 2, Bluetooth with AppDex, Chromecast, and more. But more than just a streamer, it has both analog and digital input options, including a very high quality moving magnet phono preamp and a headphone jack and amplifier that it borrows from the Unity Atom Headphone Edition. While the name has enough inputs for most demanding hi-fi setups, it lacks an HDMI port. Anyone care to explain? How this new product in 2023 omits HDMI while the less expensive, and let's just be real, old in tech years, Unity Atom doesn't is a major oversight. Yes, you can use one of the two optical inputs to connect it to your television, but at its premium price, the lack of HDMI is baffling. Now, the NPX300 can handle the preamp's power needs if you opt to get it. It is optional. According to NAME, using the NPX300, it will deactivate the internal power supply found inside the NSC222 streaming preamp, resulting in reduced noise and a cleaner sound. At least that's their promise. Now, the only amplifier currently offered in the 200 series is the NAP250. Borrowing tech from Name's flagship amplifier, the 250 is a fully balanced Class AB stereo amplifier that produces 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 190 watts into 4. Dynamic power is stated to be 300 watts, but please do keep in mind, this is in very short bursts. Now, from an industrial design standpoint, especially when used as a complete system, I'm not sure I've seen a more drool-worthy trio. All three components use the same chassis design built from thick aluminum plates that have a subtle brush texture to them. Now the glass accent that runs down the center of all three pieces is a very understated touch and it helps give the name pieces more of a tailored look. While the exposed heat sinks keep all of the components, even the amplifier, Marantz, running cool at all volumes. After testing each component individually, I opted to do the bulk of my evaluation using all three classic components together because that's how I believe most will enjoy this system. When testing the components individually, I paired the 222 preamp streamer with our AudioLab 8300 XP and our Emotiva XPA amplifier. When testing the name amplifier, I relied on our Mini DSP SHD or the EverSolo Z8 as a preamp. Additional sources included my iPhone, MacBook Pro, and Audio-Technica LP140 XP turntable outfitted with our Ortofon 2M black cartridge. The Klipsch Cornwall 4s and the Kef R11 Metas were the two speakers used during this review. Similar to our experience with the Unity Atom, the new classic, specifically the preamp, is not going to be an ideal fit for higher sensitivity loudspeakers like the Cornwalls due to its higher noise floor. The name amp on its own is silent on both the Cornwalls and Kef speakers. However, when paired with its preamp, Noise is audible when at idle. The same is true when pairing the name preamp with an otherwise silent third-party amp. And no, the MPX300, its separate but optional power supply, does not curb this issue. If you are at all picky about this sort of thing, I probably wouldn't pair these products with speakers like Klipsch. So, how does the Classic 200 system sound? Well, I love it. It sounds amazing. Very similar to my experiences with Bang & Olufsen products, most recently the A9. There's just, there's just something unique about the name sound that objectively I'm sure some of you are going to find fault with, but emotionally, I just want to listen to it all day. There is an organic quality, a smoothness to its sound, and a clarity that keeps detail and definition at the forefront without ever becoming fatiguing. It sounds true to life only without any real imperfections, but I realize I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's break it down. 
For only having 100 watts of power, the name amp exhibited complete control over both the Cornwall and R11 woofers, controlling the large 15-inch driver of the Klipsch arguably better and producing greater nuance and dynamic snap than even our reference 8300 XP. Tracks from Sam Smith, Two Lanes, and Metallica picked up a little extra weight, but never at the expense of either speaker's inherent agility. I didn't go into this review expecting bass to be a highlight. Nevertheless, when it came to the NAP250, it definitely stood out. Now, name for me, it's, they've always been about the mid-range. It's not tube-like or so neutral that it's like completely lifeless. No, vocalists, especially singer-songwriters, they have a presence to them that, that I just really love. I'm not saying vocals sounded live or artificially disconnected from the rest of the music. I'm not saying that. They just sounded more three-dimensional and, well, real. Alanis Morissette's Havoc. It's not the best recording by any stretch, yet through the name, be it either Bluetooth from my iPhone or streaming directly from Apple Music or Tidal, sounded as good as I think that I have ever heard it. Because every inflection and nuance had the right amount of attention, but it never screamed, hey, look at me. But it's not as if the name is a miracle worker, because the very next track, Spiraling, still sounded craptastic and compressed, but hey, that's the mix and not the name's fault. When it comes to the treble, the name components are more smooth than outright neutral. I've heard greater top end detail and extension from both our Ever Solo DAC and the Mini DSP SHD when acting as a preamp connected to the name 250. That said, on more compressed pop tracks like Spiraling or Coldplay Speed of Sound, the top end of the Ever Solo could become just a bit too much of a good thing, whereas the name was more forgiving and would be my go to if listening at all volumes for hours on end was the goal. While the name preamp or amplifier isn't going to outright change the sound of your favorite speakers, it would appear that at the extremes, it does soften some frequencies just a bit. With respect to soundstage, the depth and width of our test speakers were no better or worse than what I've heard before. Separation between instruments and performers was a touch better with some recordings, but on the whole was equal to that of, say, the Audiolab 9000A or the Denon A110, but not quite as good, at least when paired with the Cornwall 4s, as my deckware. Yes, I did A, B them. Dynamics were an absolute different story. The amp's ability to grip and rip our speaker's woofers made dynamics feel more resolute and snappy, not to mention engaging at lower volumes. So dynamically, I would say that the name gear provided for some notable improvements. Shifting gears, I really enjoyed using the 200's preamp to interact with the music while streaming or listening to internet radio. The day-to-day -day livability of the 222 is pretty much the same as the Unity Atom, which you know I loved. Name's favorite feature lets you store up to four sources or stations that can be recalled at the touch of a button, very similar to what Bang & Olufsen does. Oh, and real quick, Bluetooth has never sounded better to me. The built-in phono preamp is absolutely phenomenal, and it surpasses the one inside the R1000 from Technics. The name manages to be equally detailed without making records sound like you're listening to a CD. When comparing A Browns via a lossless file, streaming, and on vinyl, the digital files had more top-end detail and extension, but the record, man, it just sounded more true to life and less recorded, while also having a greater sense of spatial presence than either the lossless or streaming files. Moving on to Name's MPX power supply. Really cool idea in theory, but at least in my subjective testing, I don't feel that it made any difference whatsoever sonically. Visually, it's impressive, and I loved seeing it out on our bench, but if it were my money, I'd skip it and put the nine grand to better use, you know, like in a 401k. <laughs> Making the power supply more of a hybrid system, one that used, say, battery power to run the connected 222 preamp and the wall power to simply keep everything topped off feels like a better idea and a missed opportunity. Then there's the noise. With or without the MPX300 connected, the 222 preamp exhibited audible hiss from both the Kef and Klipsch tweeters from distances up to four feet, something I noted with the Unity Atom three years ago. So I was stunned. What is that? To find the same noise coming from the new Classic 200 series. At this price, I consider noise inexcusable even if it isn't audible at the listening position or through less sensitive speakers. I mean, if both the far more obtainable Ever Solo and Mini DSP can be dead silent, there's no reason a $9,000 product shouldn't be. So with a system price nearing $27,000, and that does not include your speakers, the new name classic 200 series components are definitely aimed at a very select group. While I don't begrudge anyone who may buy these components, I know I love to hang on to the amplifier myself, the vast majority are probably looking to more approachable alternatives. On the far 
more affordable side of things, I actually found the performance of the EverSolo Z8 in our Emotiva XPA amp to be shockingly comparable. While neither components quite had the je ne sais quoi of the name, that doesn't mean that they weren't enjoyable. If anything, the EverSolo was more resolving, detailed, and silent. While some may assume I have the Z8 to hop aboard that EverSolo train, I actually bought it myself, thank you very much, to use as a comparison for this review. But based on its performance so far, yeah, it's getting its own video. But the name has one thing the EverSolo doesn't, and that is a built-in streaming platform and third-party streaming app support. Enter Cambridge Audio's new AXN 10. When only comparing the streaming accessibility, the Cambridge functioned as well as the name. I know. Doing the math, my EverSolo Cambridge Emotiva mashup comes in at around $2,500, leaving you room to add a pair of great speakers like the Cornwalls or the Kefs while still not even coming close to the total cost of the classic trio. So how close does my hybrid system get to Name's performance? Well, closer than I'm sure Name and a lot of other high-end brands want to admit. At around 10 grand, I doubt anyone is going to call the R1000 a bargain, but compared to the Name stuff, it might as well say fussy on it. All kidding aside, Technic's amp is comparable. While not separate components, this integrated has a very equally impressive digital capability, a killer phono preamp, and enough power to drive just about any loudspeaker to perfection. What the two have in common is a lack of HDMI. What the R1000 lacks is the name's higher noise floor, making it a better fit for more speakers. And while this next one isn't going to be an apples to apples comparison, as far as sound and features go, Bang & Olufsen's Biosound 28 can do a lot of what the new Classic Series components can do, except you don't have to buy speakers to hear it. These all-inclusive powered speakers, while by no means cheap, they are a relative steal when compared directly to the name gear. I find a lot of similarities between the name and B&O Sound, not to mention both brands have an eye for design. I love them both, and if I didn't have a channel to run, y'all know where I'm parking my money. But no critique or concern regarding the name's features or performance really matters. Because like I alluded to in the intro, the act of listening to music through products solely chosen on measurements and graphs is about as much fun as getting punched in the face. For me, listening to music, it's an emotional experience. And to that specific end, the name New Classic 200 series knocks it out of the park. The build quality, pride of ownership, ease of use, and ultimate sound quality, the separate power supply be damned, all earn very high marks for me. Just know that it isn't the only hi-fi equipment on the market or solution capable of tugging at your heartstrings. So that's it. That is my take on Name's new classic 200 series. But before we get out of here, what'd you think? I mean, I really loved it. Yeah. Uh, I think that the Cornwall sounded really good with the, the Name uh, amplifier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm always hesitant to poo-poo anything based on price, <laughs> but because frankly, it's really none of my business yeah. uh, what a company charges. But man, when you told me these things cost 27 grand in total, I nearly sh <laughs> I mean, and here's the funniest thing. Mm -hmm. The first time we, when we first got these, mm -hmm. we actually thought that they were seven grand each or something like that. Yeah, we thought they were seven. <laughs> and yeah. even then we were like, wow, that's expensive. <laughs> and then when you looked it up and found out, oh, you were wrong, but it wasn't cheaper. Cheaper. It was actually <laughs> even more expensive. I was yeah. like, you're killing us, name. Like, <laughs> man, you talk about making it impossible to like, talk about product with this audience. Holy yeah, crap. Yeah. Uh, they are going to come for you and us. So yeah. buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wear big boy pants in the comments today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, there is something that you did forget though. A comparison? Or you, or, no, no, oh. not a comparison, but okay. I think some things that you conveniently left off probably to avoid further, uh, let's say, um, for the wrath. Uh, <laughs> what did I leave off? <laughs> this thing has no tone controls, no EQ. Uh, in addition to the no HDMI, I mean, I yeah. didn't know we were getting sent a Tiguan. <laughs> <laughs> the joke there is uh, uh, we were looking at a we were looking at a Volkswagen SUV several years ago, and uh, they came out with an edition called the Limited. And usually, when a car is called Limited, it means 
it's like a limited edition full of everything. But when Volkswagen calls something, this is a limited edition. You damn right it's limited. No cup holder, no back seat. Um, yeah, so back to the name. Yes, there are no tone controls. There is no EQ, um, which is a very audiophile thing to do. You get balance inside the app. You can go into the name app and adjust balance. Um, but yeah, I was a bit surprised. Um, and also not surprised. I was a bit surprised that this particular piece uh, didn't have it, but then again, I was not surprised because the name Unity Atom didn't have it. And as far as software goes, nothing is really different between the 222 and our experience with the name Unity Atom. So you could say, if you love the Unity Atom and want a little bit of an upgrade, here you go. Um, but you could also probably equally make the argument that, uh, well, I already own the Unity Atom what is this really giving me? And I, to that, I would say, <laughs> not really sure. Um, Cause it's not like a touch screen. It still doesn't have that. doesn't have this done. And you know, so it's like, <sighs> it gets a bit, it gets a bit hard. Um, I love the amplifier. The amplifier is so good. Now there is one thing I do show it in the video because name does binding posts a bit differently or lack thereof. You have to use speaker cable with a banana termination. And if you have spade connectors, then you would have to use uh, an adapter of some kind to make it work with the name. I mean, I, I agree with you. I thought it sounded really good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really struggled to understand who this is really for mm -hmm. because like you were saying, you know, audio files, they're, they're fine with certain features not being available, mm -hmm. but I don't really believe they're fine when though they're not available, but they also cost $9,000. True. Um, I think there's a little bit of a dichotomy there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, if it were me, I would just buy the, if you had the money, Yeah. I would just buy the, the amplifier mm -hmm. and then look for other sources to, um, you know, go with. Yeah. If it were me, um, I would probably go with the Technics R1000, mm -hmm. um, or maybe the Rocks and a Tessa. Oh yeah, good uh, one. I think those are both extremely beautiful products. I, mm -hmm. One of the things I wish the name Classics mm -hmm. had offered was the was a finish in silver. Yeah. I mean, if if I'm spending twenty something thousand dollars, Give me on, options. yeah, I I I expect options, <laughs> and I would want silver because that definitely is going to look more high end. But I would add um, Macintosh 7200 with the HDMI module. Oh yeah, that's... I'd add that to the list too, mm -hmm. because now now I believe with the HDMI module you're coming in under ten grand. So you guys are always asking like. You know, Max overblown, overpriced. We just made them look like a relative bargain. What about that Aurelix, the Aurelix streamer? Oh, yeah. I mean, see, now here's something. The Aurelix streamer, the Altair G1, it has a very similar look to the name amplifier. So you could actually get that and the name amplifier be in about 14, 15 grand, which again, a lot of money, but... You know, I think the Oralec uh, is going to be a better streamer preamp than the 222. So, but believe it or not, I got to say, <laughs> my favorite pairing was uh, our Apple TV Ever Solo name amp. <laughs> you know, if you want to be very amplifier heavy budget budgetarily, that that's not a bad way to go. All right. Well, that is now our take on Name's brand new classic. New classic. Yeah, it is called the new classic 200 series. Question of the day for you, uh, be nice, be nice, <laughs> but what do you think? What do you think? Let's, let's argue the merits of the product and not its price tag. How about that? There's a challenge for the question of the day. Let's ignore price and just what do you think of the new classic line from name? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Do all of the little tricklets. Uh, if you use any of the links that uh, Chrissy left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that's it. That's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you, no matter what you spend on it. So anyway, happy listening, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we really appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next video.